we're delighted to enter into our, our third lesson of this group of lessons. It begins on page 10 uh, in, your, uh, in your teaching syllabus there. We'll go as far as we can, and uh, maybe we can even get into the analyzing of the personality of the Holy Spirit, which is your lesson number three. We, would, we want to get into that, but we will get into it uh, before we complete this session. Uh, and, and talking to you regarding uh, what's called the second lesson in your teaching syllabus, the person of the Holy Spirit, dealing strong and strong and strong in order to uh, identify him as a person and uh, that you, we might uh, uh, move in truth and from there have a greater revelation of him. The Holy Ghost possesses a, a distinct personality with all the attributes of personality. We accept that. We stand upon it. We believe for it, and we ask for further knowledge in that subject. He possesses the total traits of personality, as we shall see. The Holy Spirit does not have corporality or humanity. He does not have an earth body as humans have, but that does not make his person nonetheless real because he is a person. No human can instruct the Holy Spirit. Now, <laughs> Uh, I, I guess we better park there just for a moment. Uh, no human, whether it be an institution or a person, can instruct the Holy Spirit. Who can teach the Spirit? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, even the deep things of God. And verse 11, the next verse says, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, now, now those, are, those are directional words. Uh, uh, I, I suppose you'd say that those are doctrinal words. And uh, the place of the Holy Spirit in the area... Of, of teaching. And, and so we are told here, let's, let's read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. God hath revealed the truths unto us by His Spirit. His Spirit, capital S. For the Spirit searcheth all things. That is, that is His ministry, searching all things. The deep things of God. Then He says, what man knows the things of man, say the Spirit of man? A horse doesn't know man, a mule doesn't know a man, a rooster doesn't know a man. Uh, what, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So we will be going to him for instructions. Not to instruct him, but for instructions. We shall be going to him. Paul's spirit related to us. By the, by the Holy Spirit, that he was anointed to speak of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and that's where we receive these truths that we're going to present to you. The divine parts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit possesses what we call in our world solical parts. Uh, you are a trinity. You're a triune person. Uh, you have three parts in you uh, that can function separately. You have a spirit within you that is your born-again nature that's given to you at the time of your rebirth and new birth. You have your solical parts, which happens to be your Adamic nature and, and is related to your mind with all of its faculties in every direction of thinking and, and achieving and concluding. And you have your emotions with a thousand variations. God only knows how many variations emotions do have. And then your will, uh, which is the determining factor, and to your surprise, very likely, is stronger than your emotions and your mind. Your, your mind can say, hey, I'd like to do that. Your emotions say, yeah. The will can say, no, it's all finished. You see, so the will must dominate over emotions and, and mind. And when Jesus was talking to the Father in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not say, now my brain says to your brain, let's get together on this crucifixion thing. He did not say, my emotions, I'm going to settle them down now, and my emotions are going to get together your emotions, and we're going to... No. He says, not my will, thy will. Hallelujah. 
So he went to the third part of the solical nature, you see, and, and that, must, that must make it that the highest part of your solical being in that your, your, your will demands emotions to obey and your will demands your mind to obey. And, and so uh, uh, we're going to deal with those parts. Uh, of, of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit possesses solical parts that we understand. In Romans 8 and 27 it says, He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what the mind, what is the mind of the Spirit. And because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So here you have two entities that I wish to uh, relate to. He that searches the hearts knoweth what the mind of the Spirit is. That the Spirit does have a mind. Now, when the Bible says uh, uh, anyone has a mind, I won't, uh, I won't discuss it. I just accept it. Are you here? I don't dis discuss truth. I reveal truth. And, and uh, truth is not to be discussed. Truth is truth. You can, dis you can dis discuss the news and, and discuss the war, but you don't discuss Jesus. <laughs> he is the Son of God. You don't need to discuss it. He is the Son of God. He is your Savior, and it's not discussable. And God is our Heavenly Father, and you don't set up a quarrel on it to see who can win. He is that He is, and He is that, and you don't discuss it. You see, and so here we find that the Word of God says that, uh, that he searches the hearts by the mind of the Spirit. So the Spirit does have a mind, a soul part. And it says that this Spirit maketh intercession for saints. Now that we wish to get into also. Better mark down the things we want to get into. They're going to be a bushel of them. Uh, that he makes intercession for the saints. That the, the, the Spirit himself... He makes intercession for saints. He might have been interceding few, and you didn't know who it was. But he does it all according to the will of God. He knows, understands God's will, and he don't intercede in any carnality. He don't intercede in anything that lifts up the human uh, person uh, beyond what it ought to be. He intercedes in relationship to the will of God the Father. Isn't that beautiful how they are one and flowing together? All right, so the Holy Spirit has a mind, the Bible says, the mind of the Spirit. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a will. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 11, but all these worketh, that one and self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, here you have the gifts of the Spirit, uh, beginning in, in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that the it, it says, brethren, concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you to be ignorant. And then it goes ahead and tells you that these are gifts of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. And then he creeps in and says, he will distribute these gifts as he will. So he has a will. Now he had a mind, which means to think. Now he has a will. And by that will, he determines things. Whether you've got too little or too much, he has a will. And as I was saying a few moments ago, in our, in our human person, it's very likely that your will is the strongest element of personality that you have, even stronger, even stronger than your emotions or, or your mind. And I'd like to tell you something tremendous about it. I've been working on that re recently, Some, something tremendous about it. God gave you the will, and God will not trespass your will. Huh. He gave you a will, and, and God will not negate that will. Now, I'll take you a little further. Also, the devil cannot take your will from you. Now, I have dealt with the most desperate uh, demon-possessed people, I presume, in the world. The little girl in the Philippines that was possessed of the devil. I mean, terribly possessed of the devil and had power to cause men to die. She, 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 she spoke to a doctor and said, you will die. And in, in 24 hours, he was dead. He didn't get sick. He just died. And the head jailer kicked her. She said, you will die. They buried him four days later. And fear was over the whole city. When we delivered her from the power of the devil, uh, we brought her into a doctor's home, a member of the church there, that he could teach her 
because she had been a harlot since she was 12 and didn't know much about life. And, and to, to teach her to be a lady and, and to teach her how to be a Christian. And he and his wife worked with her every day. I took her to meetings every night. But I would sit down and talk to her. And I'd say, now, you remember you were possessed of that devil. You call it the thing. She said, yes, I didn't know what else to call it except the thing. I said, now, did you ever, did you ever do things that, that he didn't want you to do? She said, yes, every day. I said, now, I don't think you're telling me the truth. Did you ever disobey him? Uh, yes, I did. I says, what could he do when you disobeyed him? She said, nothing. I said, did you ever curse him? All the time. I hated him. Well, what would he do back? He would curse me back. Although she had her mind disturbed at times when he was activated in her, she still had a will to fight him. She told me, she said, he wants more than anything else to take me away so that I can never come back. And I say, no, you can't do that. I would not accept that. He wanted to take her right on to hell in one of these fits, let her die like that and take her on to hell to be sure she couldn't get delivered, you see. And she said, no, I won't go. I won't go. I will not go with you. And he couldn't do anything about it. So remember, God gave you a will. He will not transgress against it. And the devil can't. As long as you live, you'll have a will on the face of this earth. And God gave it to you. And it's a big item. <laughs> it's a big item in the human personality. I'm going to be teaching more on that a little later. All right, you've got number one, the Holy Ghost himself. He has a mind. You've got number two, the Holy Spirit also has a will. Now, now these are attributes of the human personality. Number three, the Holy Spirit has emotion. So those are the three things that mark a human personality. In, in uh, Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 10, it says, They rebelled and they vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Now, in other parts of the Bible, it also says that. So you see, they were able to grieve the Spirit in the area of emotions. They could grieve the spirit. And that is emotions. It's not mine. When you're grieved, it's not mine. It is emotions. It's not will. With your mind, you can stop your grief. With your will, you can stop your grief. So on either side, uh, you can stop it, but it is an entity all of its own. Emotion. And the, 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 the spirit can be vexed, it says. And, and because they fought against him. And so... And there are others. I mean, that's just one little one there. There are others that show us the emotions of the Holy Spirit. So we, we can see the, the, the parts of the Holy Spirit that you and I can understand because we have the same kind of parts uh, within us. All right? And number five, which is on page 10. The Holy Spirit also is a searcher, as we were, we were looking at over here a few moments ago in 1 Corinthians 2, 2 and 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. The spirit searcheth. Now, uh, uh, searching means intelligence. Uh, 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 a baby never searches. Uh, a baby can have its toy two feet from it and will bellow and yell for a toy. And you say, well, there it is. He won't even look around. Just keeps yelling. Till you finally go pick it up and put it in his hand. Of course, he throws it away again, and then he bell bellows again because he knows that you're going to go pick it up, put it in his hand. He's not a searcher, you see. Uh, yeah, he's like some of us. He's a, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, or it won't ever get done. And that's pretty true. That's pretty true. If I were to announce right now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before you came into the auditorium, I hit a $1,000 bill. I don't think I've ever seen one, but I, uh, I, I hit a $1,000 bill, finders keepers. Anybody knows what happened in this auditorium? <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be made over to, tomorrow. We would turn carpet up, seats up, platform up until somebody says, I got it. I want, that's what you call searching. Now, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a searcher. Now, that's what we want to penetrate into. What does he search? And what does he do with what he finds when he searches? Now, now, now these are things that I must, must personally tell you that, that, I, 
that I am searching for personally myself. So, by, but God had revealed them unto His Spirit. See, the great truths are revealed by God through His Spirit. It is the Spirit who searcheth all things. Then it says, the deep things of God. You, you know, it is so easy to stay in the superfluous. Just, just a little foam, just a little foam at the top. Uh, when we do not reach into the deep things of God, and I must be honest with you, some people that I've seen that reached the deep things of God went nutty. Are you hearing me? I want us to get into the deep things of God with the right kind of a... <laughs> Thank God for television. That wouldn't go over on radio, would it? Uh, we want to search for the deep things of God and, and be in the middle of God's road. And, and to be able for God to be proud of us walking in truth and that we have penetrated what are the deep things of God that the Holy Ghost searches. He searches out those deep things of God. At the top of page 11, one of the magnificent things that we're going to be studying this in a greater measure in a later lesson. The Holy Spirit is the one who does the talking to the churches. Now, we're the body of Christ here tonight. And how beautiful it is. We are, we're a united nation here tonight. We've got people from various continents of the world. We've got people from various countries of the world. And uh, we, we are a united people in truth here. And the Holy Spirit speaks to the total ecumenical body that belongs to Christ. What does he have to say? The Holy Spirit encourages us, and we're going to give many things revealed in the book of Revelation a little later. He encourages the overcomer by saying, don't you ever quit and don't you ever give up. And that's one of the great things that he says to the churches. In Revelation 2 and 7, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, that's capital S, said to the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And so uh, the Holy Spirit says, be an overcomer. He puts a promise behind it. If you will do that, I will have you to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst, in the middle, in the middle of the paradise of God. And in this state, it will be in the new Jerusalem of God. Then verse 11 he says again, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Shall not be hurt by this second death. The second death is forever to be removed from the presence of God. And, and our problem with death is that we have seen to be taught, told that, that, that death is something like annihilation. It's a final departure. And really, I think if you think more of death, on the order of your automobile, you might be better. That if any of you go out here after this teaching session, and you step on the starter, and it, no noise, and, 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 and no life, and won't start your car, you walk back in here, and you know what you say? My battery's dead. Well, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's still under the hood out there. You say, well, 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 it is an extinction then. No, it is, needs to be hooked up. Amen. Yeah. It needs to be hooked up with the power. And when it is, man, it'll start that car when it gets a recharge. A recharge. And so sometimes when we think of death, we think of annihilation, when it might be something else uh, that God is talking about. Uh, that second death is, is, is that you have cut yourself off from the life that recharges. That you've cut yourself off from the God who can change you. You have had your, your final charge and you've entered into a thing here that's called the second death. The Christian will never have that. Uh, simply because the first death he may have and the second death he will never have. All right. In verse 17, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Now we're the church. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. The hidden manna. Now for 40 years the children of Israel ate the manna of God from heaven. And it sustained them for 40 years. Supernaturally given to them every morning for 40 years. And he says if you become an overcomer, he has some hidden manna. Hey, how many want to get in on that? 
Yeah, hidden manna. And he says, I'll give to him. Now, who's doing it? It says here, the Spirit is going to do this with a capital S, the person of the Spirit. And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knowing, saving he that receiveth it. So now we're seeing how the Holy Spirit does speak to the church. Now, I, I wanted to make that very plain, that you and I are the ones the Holy Spirit wants to talk to. If you only want to talk to angels, you and I miss it, slightly. But if he wants to talk to humans, man, that's us. And if he wants to talk to those that love Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior, that's us. If he wants to talk to people that need comfort, we can take it. If he wants to guide somebody in a way that they can't see with a natural eye, hear with a natural ear, I'm ready for the divine guidance. So we are moving in the direction of the preeminence of the Holy Ghost in our lives to guide us to all total victories. Verse 29 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And, and so for seven churches, he was talking to all seven of them. And in uh, John 3, I mean in Revelation 3 and 6, and verse 6, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And then verse 13, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, that reveals to us time and time again that the Spirit does speak to churches. How many believe you're part of the church? Yes. Then you've got to expect the Holy Ghost to talk to you. Yes. And, and uh, we just want to, we're trying to enforce this truth, you know, from every angle before we really get into it. Uh, but, and if we don't, it may have some weak spots in it. We don't want any weak spots in this great truth related to the person of the Holy Ghost. All right, number seven, it's on page 11. The Holy Spirit in man's salvation. Man's salvation is in three parts. I, I've, I've mentioned that. And 1 John 5 and 6, he, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. And so it is the Spirit that bears witness to our born-again nature. Our born-again nature. And again, let us look at 1 John 5 and 7. We have once already. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, of the Word, and the Holy Ghost. There are three persons who bear record. One is as much a person as the other is a person. And so there are three persons who bear record in the heavens. And they are the Father and the Word. You know what a word is, I'm sure. A word is an offspring of a thought. You have the great thought. And in order for you to understand the thought, the word must be projected. Then you have an understanding of the thought. God the Father is the great thought of the universe. And in John 1, when it says, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same in the beginning with God, He is revealing to us, He is revealing to us that Christ is the expression of the Father. You say, how does the Father look? Look at Jesus. He's just like Him. He's what we call down south, the spitting image. Yeah. I don't know what that means really. Don't nobody spitting. But anyway, <laughs> it means you're very much alike, you know. And, and, and so, if you want to know what the Father looks, He's like Jesus. Because uh, He is the Word. And, and a Word is an offspring of a thought. And the, the Word is an expression of a thought. And, and you can't see the thought, but you can see the Word, you know, because it comes out and you can see what it means. And therefore, that's, that's what God is to us. Now, in your number eight, the Holy Spirit is a sanctifier. The Holy Spirit has a vital part in, in man's salvation. That's what we're dealing with under number seven. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13, it says, But we are bound to give thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 